Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm a Managing Director at Risk360, and I help oversee our ISO 27001 series. This is our ISO 27001 Explained series, and today I'm going to cover off on clauses 9.1, which is around control objectives around access control. So on my screen today, on the left-hand side, I have the ISO 27001 framework up, where we'll cover off on the 114 controls relevant to ISO 27001. And on the right-hand side of my screen, I have ISO 27002, which is the detailed implementation guidance for the 114 controls in ISO 27001. So in, in uh, Clause 9.1 around access control, there are only two controls. And this is where you specify your uh, policies and requirements around access control. So Control 9.1.1 is around your access control policy. And this is where you define... Uh, at the highest level what your requirements around access control are going to be and I'm going to show you that in a policy example here in just a second and then in control 9.1.2 this is access to networks and network services so this is if you think about access like a perimeter and your network is typically your outermost perimeter um, so if you're using something like Active Directory it might be access to Active Directory if you don't have a traditional network and you're thinking about something like uh, G Suite or kind of your access to your uh, Google Cloud Platform or to Office 365 and your Microsoft Platform, whatever you consider your outermost network to access co uh, company systems, uh, that would be access to your, your network systems. If you're using things like VPN or, or anything like that, that would also fall into this control 9.1.2. So let me hop into an access control policy because I do want to show you an example there. So what I have up here uh, on my screen is RISC-360's example um, ISO 27001 based security policy. And you can see that we go on and we talk a lot about access um, and all the different clauses and the different sub-requirements around access control. But for clause 9.1.1, we spit we just say that access uh, must be limited to only those individuals who need access to the data to do their work based on the data classification policy. So access control is all about least privilege. So you only want people having access to data that they need to do their job based on their job description. And that's really what you want to define in policy. The trick with access control is putting that into practice and actually limiting that access and having processes around controlling access granting access during onboarding, taking away access during offboarding, which the framework covers later on. But this is as easy as that control is, just specifying that highest level control. So I hope this was helpful in terms of thinking through how to meet Clause 9.1. In the next video series, we'll cover off on 9.2. If you enjoyed this video or you want further guidance, you can check out our website at risk360.com, and you can keep watching this video series where we'll continue to cover the framework. Thanks.